Quick now! Come in here! I brought something! <laughs> Come on! Ah, there we go! <sighs> Come on, man. Like, all the cool kids are drinking them. <laughs> we might as well. I mean, I've been carrying them around all morning. <laughs> Do you, uh, feel any different? <laughs> nah, I don't feel a thing. <laughs> Detention. No. We have a shared issue, whether they know it or not, whether they like it or not. This is the strength of the soldiers in the other side of the world, for the first time, humanity in hell and bondage. Good evening, I'm Murray McFarlane and welcome to Reporting Scotland. Tonight, I am joined live from Royal Exchange Square by John Glassford, Alexander Spears and William Cunningham, three of Glasgow's infamous Tobacco Lords, all wealthy merchants who made enormous fortunes trading tobacco in Scotland imported from America. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, thank, thanks for having us, Murray. It's our, uh, it's our pleasure to be here. Yeah. You are all praised by the people of Scotland for helping build the bustling city of Glasgow that we know and love today. My question is, how did this come about? Uh, in simple terms, uh, all three of us owned plantations in Virginia, in the Americas, um, where tobacco was grown and uh, shipped back to Glasgow. Uh, where it was sold on and earned us a lot of money. We were extremely rich again. Glasgow's at the centre of an economic boom thanks to us and our tobacco. See that building behind us, Murray? I used to live there. Anyway, trading from Glasgow to Virginia 
must have taken a long time, no? It did money, um, yeah, um, but the profit was worth it. Ourselves and other Glasgow merchants were part of the transatlantic slave trade, you can, Murray? Uh, yes, basically uh, we would load ships with uh, manufactured goods such as guns, uh, cloth and iron and set sail to Africa where we would trade these goods for uh, slaves. These slaves uh, would then be transported along what was called uh, the Middle Passage um, to the Americas uh, where they would uh, work on plantations like ours. This would make us even more money as we didn't have to pay our slaves. It was chattel slavery. So they were our property. We owned them, Murray. Gentlemen, I've got no interest in slavery or slave labour. But what I do want to know is how the tobacco trade with America ended. Basically, our friends over the pond had a little uh, revolution and trading completely stopped. Uh, many planters in uh, Virginia owed us a lot of money. Uh, money, money we never received. Uh, yeah, uh, I never sold uh, any shares before the downfall, and uh, thus my days as a rich man were done. Unlike John, I stockpiled cheap tobacco before the revolution, you can. And since there was a lack of product after the revolution, I sold mine for very high prices. Uh, no need to rub it in, pal, eh? Uh, but Murray, uh, yeah, I think Scotland does need to hear more about the involvement of uh, slaves in the tobacco trade uh, and in the history of Glasgow and how slaves helped build this city. Although we get all the credit for building this metropolis, streets named after us, etc., none of this would have been possible without slavery. We are definitely wrongly perceived in today's Scotland, like, and as a nation, we all need to accept our involvement, you can. Uh, do some do some research, uh, teach it in schools, you know, change street names because uh, we personally we, uh, we personally don't deserve them. Gentlemen, I'm just being informed that that is the interview over. I appreciate your time, but we're going to have to cut it there. Okay, thanks. Aye, but we're not finished, Murray. On to some important news now. Today in Glasgow. Rangers and Celtic kicked a ball around the park for 90 minutes, whilst their fans of all ages screamed abuse at each other and racial slurs towards players. It's been reported there were 29 stabbings after the match.